You know, men don't go to doctors. Don't, don't let me get started on that. But it is so critical to understand and know and act early on whatever's going on in your body. But people can go blind with diabetes in a heartbeat. I, I think that we have to figure out and have to learn that we have to supply and put education in every aspect of our lives if we're going to really have an impact upon this ep epidemic. And I think public education is, you got to start with educating the public. You know, and I think, and yes, and one of the things we've taken tremendous advantage of in the field of hypertension, which I think is very appropriate for diabetes, educating people about high blood pressure in barber shops and beauty shops. But I think also, you know, and everybody thinks that on every Sunday morning, all African Americans in church, but we all know that that's the furthest thing from the truth. You know, if you want to find, most men get their hair cut and most women get their hair done. So that's a good place to start where you will probably reach more people than you'll ever reach by doing it in churches. So we have to find ways of doing this, to impacting the uh, education upon the entire, pop entire population. I've been a volunteer with the, with the ADA, and I, when I was on the city council, I found out I had diabetes because I, they were doing a walk through my council district. Mm -hmm. And so they asked me to be the chair, and I said, yeah, and I, uh, I'll be the chair. Let's do what all good politicians do. Right. Uh, but I went to the doctor for an unrelated issue, and he said, well, let me give you a test so you can say that you've been tested. And so I found out then I had type 2 diabetes, and at the time, I didn't think I had any symptoms were you of the diabetes. First in your family? No, actually, my uncle uh, is a diabetic, is type two diabetic, uh, but he, you know, he found out that he was in his fifties. Uh, well, I guess it was about uh, twenty years ago. So I guess I was in like thirty five, thirty seven, mm -hmm. in that range, and I got really depressed when I found out about it. Until my uncle Ezra came by and said that I could live with it, and I've been trying to work with that ever since. Well, you know, I, I wasn't. Kind of well, I wasn't a d depressed at first, mm -hmm. but i have been depressed or discouraged a little bit recently mm. because I've had to switch from oral medication to insulin. Oh, okay. And I that. never, never, never wanted to be on insulin. But, well, you know, think about a pro football player that yeah. had to recognize that one of his organs isn't working anymore. I mean, yeah. Anymore. Well, did your, did your doctor tell you that if you got your diabetes under better management that you may be able to get off of the insulin? Yeah, they did, and that's, that's what I'm striving to do now because one of the things I've found is since I've been on insulin, I've gained a tremendous amount of weight. Mm. And I've gained almost 40 pounds since mm -hmm. starting the, the insulin. Right. And I was on a steady kind of weight decline mm. um, prior to that. Well, yeah. One of the things I, I like to tell my patients is that diabetes is a disease that you can live with if you control it. You can live a normal life, do normal things. Right. I think one of, the things, one of the things that can help is uh, they do have education now for, you know, not just the individual, but their families to mm -hmm. let them understand, you know. Oh, that, I didn't know that. You know, I, I need to get my family a, educated because I, mean, yeah. I know they can help me more. Yeah, and they come a, to me and say, what can I do to help? And I want to know, well, look, help me look at my feet. Because that's something that's real important, like you said, for a diabetic that I didn't know about, right. that I need to check my feet all the time. Is, is that what you tell your patients? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, I also advise them to have their primary care physician check their feet. Mm. You know, <clears throat> I may see them once every three months or once every six months, but they may see their primary care doctor once a month. Right. So I advise them to check their feet, uh, look for any sign of sores, any sign of any mm -hmm. irritation, any sign of any hard areas of skin because those are the areas that can lead to different problems. And I also encourage them to wear the proper shoes. Uh, it's not so difficult with men, but you know, it's a little bit more difficult with women. Are these the proper shoes? Probably not. Well, it, it looks <laughs> I mean, like a pretty good pair of sandals. Yeah, and I've worn these out. I, these are my favorite pair. Uh -huh. You know, when I take them off, you can see the grooves of my toes Well, you don't want to see any yeah. indentations or any uh -huh. imprints from you know, any of the straps going across the foot or around the mm -hmm. heel. You want to make sure that they're comfortable, no areas of any irritation. Okay. But do your patients really understand that when you oh, yeah. say, no, oh, yeah. let's get back to the other point mm -hmm. you were talking mm -hmm. about. When you say you're going to die, you're going to lose the limb. Because that's been told to me, and it just sort of like goes in one ear and out the well, other. I don't know if that's a denial thing. In my office, I have pictures. I have photographs of what wow. you know, bad diabetic feet look like with the ulcers, the partial foot amputations. No, I don't think I've seen know, those. Um, I haven't yeah. seen those, yeah. yeah. 
I think that yeah, helps. Yeah, that would it. Kind I of scare me that, straight. That's kind of I think that straight, right? <laughs> That might right. scare me enough to do something. But it seems like you're always getting scared straight. Right. And then that, that, that kind of adds to, it's almost like, you know, say it's sugar, but there's nothing sweet about it. Right. You know what <laughs> I mean? And it. it's just like, it's, it's there with you all the time. So mm-hmm. it almost becomes comfortable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and when I was in office, I used to, and I still do this as a volunteer, I, pr- I try to promote awareness, promote people getting tested. But a lot of times for me personally, it's just like you described, one day you're up and you're dedicated, I'm, I'm going to be on it, I'm going to take care of it, I'm going to check myself. And then the other day, it just feels like an incredible burden. And the last thing that I want to do is stick myself and give myself a shot, even though I know I need that shot. No, I, it's, it's, it's been a challenge. But it's, like, it's like every single day. Have you found a way day. to make it fun? Have you found a way to make it interesting? Well, the only way to, to, life to, to, to really make it fun is that you know, I've, I've, I've incorporated uh, my daughters in, in helping me cook and taking care and, and trying to teach them how to cook because they're candidates for it because of, because of me. You know, I mean, I have uh, four brothers and sisters and none of them have, they have various weight sizes, you know, but none of them have diabetes except me. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've tried to teach my kids that they're, you know, at least 50% chance of developing at some t- point in the future. And I try to help them learn how to cook and prepare meals and to, ha- how to prevent it, you know, the way that, not, so that they won't end up like, like me, right. you know. Well, they'd be lucky if they end up like you. In, in, well, in I mean, respects. you know, in most respects, but that, that, <laughs> I don't want to, yeah, not in the that no, I wouldn't yeah. wish this on anybody. No, I wouldn't either. I mean, it, it's tough. And, but, you know, you have to, you have to manage it. And some days for me are just better, better than others, you know. Well, hopefully you have a lot more better days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we're still here. We're still, we're still talking, so yeah. we got some good days. <laughs> like the doc said, you know. Well, it's important because one of the complications of diabetes is the um, la- the loss of feeling in the feet. So neuropathy, the nerves um, can die out. And so if they don't get foot exams done, they might have stepped on a nail. They may have cut their foot and not know. So we teach them how to do self exams with a mirror. If they can't you know, lift their feet to see their feet, we get them to get mirrors that are on long sticks so that they can look, especially after taking a bath or after showering. We wanna make sure that they are looking at their skin, uh, make sure that their bath water is not too hot so that it doesn't burn them because again, they may have a loss of feeling in their feet and we wanna make sure that any cuts that they see that they take care of those by going to the doctor because with diabetes, when you have a cut, your healing process slows down.